I haven't made a video on the Regency i1500 in a little bit now, and that's because we have not needed to burn the unit. With the temperatures that we've had outside, the Woodstock Soapstone Ideal Steel, which is on the other side of this chimney, has been burning full time, 24 seven, and it's been heating the house quite comfortably. Right now, we just had a front move through. Temperature outside is currently 10 degrees Fahrenheit. I lit the Regency up this morning. It's been burning now for several hours. It needs a new load of wood in it. And what I thought I would do is actually do a test with this stove and see what the burn rate is on the, the wood. Because if I check burn rate, I'll be able to compare that to the EPA test results. So what I've done is I've got three pieces of red oak here and I have weighed this out. This is 11.8 pounds of wood. So this, these three pieces of oak weigh 11.8 pounds as they are right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, get these loaded into the Regency. I'm gonna burn it on the minimum air setting, but of course I'm gonna go through the process of letting the stove get hot before I engage the catalyst and all of that. But basically gonna do normal burn procedure and we are gonna see how long this lasts. Basically I'm gonna burn this until we're back down to coals, kind of like we are now. And we'll see how long that takes and then we'll see how much wood by weight we are burning per hour. So I just put that wood into the stove. It is 9.38 a.m. Right now, everything's wide open. We're gonna let that get caught, get hot. We'll engage the catalyst and let it burn through its cycle. now 950 and we are sufficiently up to temp that I can shut the air down and also engage the catalyst. So now we'll just let that go. While this is going, I'll just point out a few things about the conditions today. Number one, as I mentioned, it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside. The wind is blowing 10 to 15 miles an hour. So we have conditions for pretty strong draft based on the weather. This unit is hooked up to a six inch stainless steel chimney liner that runs the full height of the chimney and it's about 30 feet long. Again, that's another factor that could contribute to strong draft. The oak in here has been inside of a woodshed for 18 months and it was cut nearly three years ago. I decided to do this test because I felt like the I-1500 here was just burning at a really high rate of burn compared to my other experience with the Regency I-2400 as well as my experience with the Woodstock Soapstone Ideal Steel which I have connected to the other flue in this chimney. And what I noticed with this unit is not only does it seem to burn fast but there's not really any difference hardly visible at all when you're running it with the air wide open versus running it with the air control all the way closed. So what I did is I went and I pulled the EPA test reports, the full reports for this unit, as well as the Woodstock Soapstone Ideal Steel for comparison. 
Now the EPA test is run on a 15 foot chimney, so different conditions, and then the weather and atmospheric conditions are also generally not the extreme winter cold like we're seeing or I'm seeing right now. And that all influences draft. Now, when this unit was tested, the I-1500, there were four runs done and they're done at different burn rates and then the emissions and everything are monitored throughout the test. And the way the test works is the stove is actually sitting on a scale. So they know the weight of the wood and the consumption rate of the wood because they're measuring the weight of the stove with the wood load in it during the test. Now there are different test standards even within the EPA test results. For example, you could test on crib wood, which is basically kind of like your two by four lumber with blocks on the end to kind of make a crib or a stack of wood that goes in the stove. So that's one fuel source you can use for testing. The other fuel source you can use for testing is cordwood, which of course is what everybody is burning. Now let's take a look at the EPA test data for the Regency I-1500 and the Woodstock Soapstone Ideal Steel. You notice right at the top of the table that the Regency was tested using crib wood, the Woodstock Soapstone Ideal Steel tested using cordwood. Underneath that, you'll see I have pulled out a low burn rate test run and a high burn rate test run. There were three runs, a low, medium, and a high on the Ideal Steel, and there were four runs on the Regency I-1500 in total. So again, I'm just pulling numbers out of a couple of those runs so that we can compare. As you can see, a low burn in the Regency I-1500 is 0.97 kilograms per hour of dry wood, compare that to 0.58 kilograms per hour of dry wood on the ideal steel. So there is a dramatic difference in the amount of turndown between this insert and the ideal steel wood stove. You can see that the efficiency, 78.5% for the Regency, 81.1% for the ideal steel, and then the emissions, 0.8 grams per hour on the Regency and 0.39 grams per hour on the ideal steel. So the ideal steel at a low burn, more efficient, fewer emissions. Now when you go to a high burn, it flips the other way. The ideal steel on a high burn is uh, burning 3.35 kilograms of wood per hour on a dry basis. Compare that to only 1.71 kilograms per hour for the Regency. Efficiency is also much, much lower. 66.2% for the Ideal Steel versus 76.3% on the Regency. And then the emissions as well, 2.7 grams per hour for the Ideal Steel on a high burn versus 0.9 for the Regency. Now, I will say no one's burning that Ideal Steel wide open. It would not make any sense to burn that stove wide open. In fact, it would be too hot, you wouldn't be a controllable fire. And a big reason why those emissions are not so clean is simply because there's not enough time. There's too much airflow going through the stove. There's not enough time to burn all the smoke adequately. Now, the medium run on the ideal steel is actually at a burn rate of 0.89 kilograms per hour and an efficiency of 78%. So those numbers are fairly comparable to the reported low burn on the Regency I-1500. So that's just a comparison here. And so you can see having come from burning that ideal steel a lot, I am used to significant control of the fire and I am used to clean burn over a wide range of control for the fire. As you can see in the burn rates here from a low of 0.97 to a high of 1.71 kilograms per hour dry, there is not such a wide range in burn rate on the Regency I-1500. And in fact, it's more toward the middle or high end of what the Ideal Steel does. So this is gonna have a higher burn rate. The big question is, is the burn rate that I see close to the EPA test results or is it significantly higher? So that's what I'm hoping to find out here today. The next thing that we need to consider is that all of these numbers in these EPA test results for burn rate are based on dry wood. 
Now, dry wood is not what we're burning. It's not what I'm burning right now. I am burning seasoned cordwood. Well, that contains some moisture. But if we want to know a true burn rate, I can't use just the weight of the cordwood that I put in there and do you know, weight of wood per hour because the weight is influenced by the amount of moisture in the wood. So we need to look at the moisture content of the wood itself and do some calculations so that we can convert what I put in there to a dry basis. So then we can actually compare these results. So to define moisture content, when you have a material that holds moisture like wood or like soil, it is common to base the moisture content on the oven dried weight or mass of the material because that is a consistent number that is reproducible and that oven dry weight or mass represents the weight when all of the water has been removed from the material. So it, when we look at moisture content in that way, moisture content is going to be equal to the weight of the water divided by the oven dry weight of the material. And in our case, that is wood. So if we're looking at the moisture content of wood, the moisture content is defined as the weight of the wood that we have minus the oven dry weight. That quantity right there represents the weight of water that's within the wood. And then we would divide that by the oven dry weight. And then we typically express this as a percentage. Now, ideal cordwood for fires is going to have 20% or less moisture content. Now, I don't have a moisture meter. I've never felt that I need a moisture meter. I always dry my wood for a, a significant amount of time, at least a year. I indicated that this red oak is about three years dry and spent the last 18 months inside a woodshed. I am going to make an assumption that this red oak is at 20% moisture content. Now it may be a little lower than that, given how long it's been drying and how it's been drying, but I'm gonna assume 20%. So I need to figure out based on the 11.8 pounds of red oak, how much dry red oak that is, because that 11.8 pounds contains moisture. So to do that, we're gonna rearrange our moisture content equation to solve it for the oven dry weight. And so we're gonna have the weight of the wood divided by one plus the moisture content. Now I said we're gonna assume that our moisture content is 20%. If we do that, this means that our 11.8 pounds of cordwood is equal to 9.8 pounds of oven dry wood. And that's equivalent to 4.5 kilograms of oven dry wood. So from here, we're going to see how long it takes to burn 4.5 kilograms of oven dry wood. And then we're going to be able to compare that to the burn rates in those EPA test results. And again, those burn rates are in kilograms of dry wood per hour. So that's going to be our basis of comparison. We just need this to burn down and see how long it takes to get back to that coaling stage. And of course, there's error there as well because I'm not fully burning all the wood. But again, we're going to get a decent idea from this test of how a low burn on my setup compares to a low burn in the EPA test. later 1 40 p.m i'm gonna say we're about burned down to the point where we started let's open up the stove and take a look
Yep, just a few coals left in there. So that's what we'll call it. We'll say four hours. So we put in 11.8 pounds of seasoned cordwood, which worked out to about 9.8 pounds dry, assuming 20% moisture content, which is 4.5 kilograms. That burned for four hours. I've put another load of wood in this stove here and it's not taking right off. So there really wasn't very much left for coals at all. But if we take that four hours, that works out to 1.12 kilograms per hour dry wood. Now, realistically, maybe it was more like three and a half hours just because I don't have hardly anything left here. And if that were the case, at three and a half hours, it's 1.28 kilograms of dry wood per hour. So that looks to be the range that I'm looking at based on my burn times. Now, just to compare and just see how sensitive this is, I did a little bit of a, a comparison adjusting the moisture content on the wood, assuming it was as low as say 15%. I highly doubt that it's that low. But just to check that out, I ran those numbers. And as you can see, if the wood instead had 15% moisture content, if we look at a four hour burn time, it goes up to 1.17 kilograms per hour. And if it were a three and a half hour burn time, it's 1.33 kilograms per hour. So what we're seeing is right around 1.2 to 1.25 kilograms per hour. And that is on a dry basis. The EPA test showed 0.97, so I am burning almost a quarter of a kilogram more per hour than that EPA test result. So whether it's just the draft of this uh, setup or whether it has to do with something with the air control on the unit, regardless, I'm using about a quarter of a kilogram more per hour than that EPA test. And in fact, I'm only half a kilogram per hour away from the max of the 1.71 kilograms per hour. So hopefully you found this result interesting. If you are shopping for a wood burning stove or a wood insert, you can access these EPA test results. The manufacturers often will post them on their website for Regency. All of these are posted on their website, even for older models. I'll put a link down in the description. For Woodstock Soapstone, same thing. They have their EPA test results on their website and I will put a link down in the description. So if you're shopping for a unit, you can actually look at those EPA test results. You can see what some of the burn rates are. You can see how the test was run and see some of that performance if you happen to be curious. We'll wrap this up here and I got to try and encourage this fire to get going again.